David, as a young man, he was just what they called a lad, a young boy. He hadn't got... He hadn't got the, the muscle and the strength of the big guys yet that were out in battle and had fought for many years. He was, you know, in his late teens, early 20s, you know, still skinny and scrawny. Those ages, a lad, and he comes out there. He wanted to go see what's going on in the battle. So he comes out there with the lunch because he's got this valiant heart out of worshiping the Father. He's valiant for God. And he wants to see how it's going. He goes, I'm ready. <laughs> I want to go up there and see how it's going. And so he goes up there and he sees everybody, a bunch of cowards, chickens, afraid, afraid to face the powers of darkness that were coming out against the servants of the Lord. They forgot that it was God's army. They forgot that it was God's battle. And they were taking it upon themselves to fight that battle. They were taking it upon their ability and their strength. And they couldn't find a match up. But here comes young David. Here he comes. And he's like, what are you guys doing? Have I not? Because his old brother gets on him and tells him, what are you doing? You go home, you bad boy. You're not big enough to be out here and, and, and you're just being naughty. He used that word. You're just being naughty. David goes, don't I have cause? This uncircumcised Philistine dares to defy the armies of God. Don't I have a cause? I'll take him on. I'll take him on. Why? Because David was a worshiper. He worshiped radically. And he found, he entered into that place with God where he knew. He knew that God was able to fight his battle for him. He knew that he didn't have to be a failure. He knew that God would come through. He knew that God was going to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, worship him. Worship him. For he's worthy of every one of our praises. Day and night. Not half-heartedly. Not a little clappy, clappy, heary there, but passionately. Father, you have my heart. My heart. Oh, hallelujah. Not I just woke up, it's Sunday morning, and, you know, you know, Sunday, for some reason, you can just always sleep in till 9 o'clock. You know, you wake up at 7 thinking about where you're going to go take a run on Saturday morning, or, you know, what are you going to do that's entertainment. But Sunday morning, man, you're just tired. And, you know, you can be out on the trails or wherever on the board or, Whatever, early Saturday morning, but Sunday morning, you know. Well, Lord, <laughs> we don't want to be like that. We want to be valiant and passionate like David. We don't want to just be trying to wake up to come into the house of the Lord, but we want to come running because the glory of God is going to be revealed in this place and we're going to be strengthened by the power of His Holy Spirit as we come together in unity. That unity of the church as that unity of the church comes together and that strength is brought into one place because we came running passionately to worship him, holding nothing back. That we could be valiant like David. He goes after Goliath by himself. The army's hiding. He goes down there by himself. First they tried, they tried to put all the armor on him. The, all, all the armor of man's ability. All of the ability of man. And David goes, I can't do this. You know, it's nice of you guys and everything. I appreciate your concern. But I've got this fellowship and relationship with the Almighty. He is my shield. He is my shield. He is my shield. He's my breastplate. It's the righteousness of God in me. <laughs> Oh, that will cover me, that will shield me, that will protect me, that will enable me to win. Not to fail, but to win. To stand. Oh, when everything else looks like it's going to fall apart, I'll stand in God. And he will win. The victory will be mine because I believe him. He is able. 
So David just chose five smooth stones, and he only used one of them. He only used one of them. It only took one. Stones. A stone. He came against the Goliath, a man that had a sword that a lot of us couldn't pick up. I know I couldn't even probably, you know, lift it off the ground. We couldn't even pick it up. He had a sword. He had everything. He had all the equipment, all the, all the natural ability, the height, the strength. As far as man's ability. But David said, you come after me with sword and shield. But I come after you in the name of the Lord, God Almighty. And he swung that thing around and he took down Goliath. And he ran and he chopped his head off. He finished the battle. He finished it. He finished the work. He took it on home. He didn't leave anything. For the enemy to try to resurrect. What is too hard for you? The Lord said, what is too hard for you? When you worship him with all of your might, when you pour out yourself upon him. Yeah, I could speak real quietly right now. Just When you pour out yourself upon him. But I'm excited about it. And I don't care what anybody thinks. If you don't like listening to me, plug your ears. Don't listen. You guys can turn me off if you'd like to. You have, that, you have that convenience. Go ahead. I'm going to be passionate. I'm going to be passionate. I am passionate. That's just who I am. David was passionate. I like these kind of people. He wasn't holding back. He wasn't going to let anything intimidate him. He's like, I'm going up. I'm doing it. And he lived his life like that. No matter what came his way, he would not be defeated. He would not Get under the load that the enemy wanted to place him under. He just would humble himself and say, I'm the man. I'm the man. Now, Lord, forgive me. Father, I want you. Father, I'm not, I'm not leaving you. I may have made a mistake. I may have found myself in a place that I shouldn't have been. But, Lord, here I am. Here I am. See, so many people don't want to humble themselves. They want to be right. They want to excuse and justify the mess they get themselves in. They want to work it out in their ability. God doesn't need your ability. He doesn't want your ability. That's the whole thing he's reasoning with you to get rid of. He wants you to trust in his ability. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will win every time. You will win every time. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. His ability is you humble yourself. You lay down your life. He showed it to us in the cross. In the cross of Jesus, he showed us complete and total surrender and humility. God Almighty so loved us. God Almighty showed us the true meaning of humility. He loved us so much that he came to earth. He became flesh. And he suffered and he died because he loved. Because he loved. He suffered total and complete humility. To think the one that created all things and all people stood and let them degrade him, torture him, abuse him, mock him. He created them, and he stood by and he allowed it. Oh, what love. You know, if we walk in this love, we'll never have any problem. There'll be nothing too hard. There'll be nothing too hard. (laughs) Because it'll all be about Jesus. (laughs) Oh, it will all be about him. And not our ability to look at him. I don't care how many times I talk about it or the Father reveals the glory of the cross to me over and over again. It is still something I can't comprehend. 
how the one that created all things would come and love man so much that he would make a way to bring them back. You know, he could have just destroyed everybody and started over. He said he was going to do it with Moses. He was going to just destroy the children of Israel and start over. But Moses stood in the gap. That love that God has, that he <laughs> would show us that sample, that example of humility. Whew. Oh, what great love. Oh, glorious Father. <laughs> Well, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. <laughs> and you purchased us. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Through your blood. Oh, Father, to give us, to give us eternal life. That you would send your only begotten Son into this world. You know how much God cherished him and loved him? I mean, God the Father, he's God. But it was not easy for him to see one moment for them to, for, for their creation, the creation to mock and say all kinds of evil things against Jesus. It was not easy for, for, for Father to see that. It wasn't easy for him to see them torture him, beat him, hang him on the cross. It was his only, only begotten son. You know, we comprehend love with our children, with our family, with the person that we love the most. Well, God, that love that we have came from God. Love, all love comes from God. Even if you're an evil person and you find somewhere in that evil heart to really, truly love, that all comes from God. It comes from God. So God loved with that same extent and much, much, much greater than what we could imagine his son. But yet he loved us so much that he knew that this is what it took to bring us back into fellowship with him. Oh, what great love. Oh, what great love. None of us have to be left outside. Amen. Not with this love. Not with this goodness that he has. I would say we don't want to walk on it. And we don't want to push it. To the end. To the last moment. And maybe not get the chance to repent. And get called home. Without repentance, I wouldn't want to stand before God like that. Because he says at that point, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because I never knew you. You never stopped. You never stopped participating in iniquity. In this love that we have with the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, the power of heaven that works and operates in our lives, if we'll just get caught up in the love, we never have to be caught up in the iniquity that the enemy would try to draw us away with. If we just get caught up in the love of God, just stay there. Just stay in the worship. Just stay in the praise. Just stay in the glory. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Well, I think I'm going to interrupt myself here. <laughs> Uh, Pastor, for those that don't know, Pastor Mark and Ann are um, in between Nepal and South Korea. And uh, what a glorious, glorious, glorious time. Again, there's never been so many people come out to any one meeting in southern Nepal. And the glory of God was so revealed. People healed, delivered, set free, everything you can think of. The glory of God was revealed powerfully. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we get to be a part. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that we're a part of what you're doing. 
who in Nepal, the great awakening in Nepal. And now he's getting ready to fly to South Korea and will be there and straight from there on in to Japan and will be there for in Japan for 10 holy ghost filled shaking the nation of Japan days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 10 days of glory in Japan. We want to press in for that in prayer, every one of us. We want to press in for what God is doing right now in Japan, a great awakening in Japan, Father. I don't know. I have not read history, and if anybody has it, I'd like to know about past revivals in Japan. I know that there's been some, but I don't know that there's ever been a real great awakening in Japan. But we thank God for a great awakening in Japan. We thank you, God, that you turn that nation upside down and all the nations of the earth that are bound by religion and oppression. Oh, Jesus, that they just see the light of your glory, the light of your love, the light of your goodness. Ha, huh. Father, and you look. I was, I was thinking about my husband was kind of going over... Uh, he deals with a lot of Hindu people and some Muslims and just, you know, he was, went to work one day and he said, I, was in, I went to five nations today. And he was naming off the different nations of the people that he was preaching to um, that day. He's like, you know, I didn't even have to leave San Diego and I ministered to five nations. And so he was going over some stuff learning about uh, um, the Muslim leader. I can't even remember what his name is. Who? Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> Muhammad. And, um, you know, you look at that and you look at how he tried to kind of look like Jesus. He tried to be nice. And, you know, what I thought was funny, save the trees. But anyway, nobody could ever cut down the trees. But, you know, everybody's supposed to be nice to each other until it came to that point that they made him fighting mad. You know, the devil will always rise up and bring death. Because when there's not truth, there's death. Jesus came and gave his life. He died out of love. He brought love, life eternal. And he's commanded us to lay down our life and to love. Not fighting people, not blowing ourselves up to take a few, you know, Christians out or, or whoever, but to die to bring the gospel to them that they can see the light of his glorious salvation a love laying down of our life. You know, but with, with Muhammad, he had to get in the battle and go start killing everybody. And to this day, the religion has such a strong foundation of killing. Everybody's got to be killed, beat, hurt. There's no loving and bringing people in with the love of the gospel and showing them the goodness and the kindness of Jesus Christ. And in every religion, you will find that same thing. You will find the horrors of sin and death. You know, the Hindus, you know, they, they present themselves as such peace and love. Just get into it, and you will find all kinds of iniquity and hatred and abuse and ungodliness. And we have people that can testify because they've partaken and seen of the things right in the middle of stuff that has gone on in those religions. But we have the Son of the living God that brings forth the heart of the Father that we want to bring into the heart of Japan. So they're not bound any longer through deception. Oh, Father, we thank you for this glorious, mighty power that's on the inside of us that we right here in San Diego can get on our knees and we can cry out to you and we can see, Father, your glory revealed your glory revealed on the earth just because we take the time to passionately pray. Father, right now, we thank you, Father, for the glorious work in South Korea. We thank you, Father, for the things that you were doing and that you were preparing. And yes, Lord, the part in South Korea is preparing, Father, for even more in North Korea. It is just a path to North Korea to see North Korea broken free from the bondage that they've been held in. Father, we thank you that you bring down that strong hand, you bring down that regime in North Korea. We break the power and the yoke of darkness that is held over that nation in the mighty name of Jesus. And no longer, no longer would those people be 
held in such captivity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for those that have gone into North Korea and have laid down their lives for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, the blood of the martyrs. Father, the blood of the martyrs in North Korea. Father, we ask you, Father, that that blood be now brought forth in victory in the mighty name of Jesus as, as uh, North Korea comes. We call North Korea to the kingdom of God to be once again, once again, the Jerusalem. The Jerusalem of the East. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your glory. Hallelujah. And, Father, we thank you. We thank you for all of Japan. Oh, God, we thank you for this great awakening in Japan. We thank you for your glory being revealed. In the mighty name of Jesus, signs and wonders and miracles. We thank you, Father, God, that you shake this nation. Father, that, that I thank you, Jesus, that we just see Buddha and Buddhism crumble, crumble, Father. We see it crumble. It be made a plain in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, Lord. We praise you, Father, for the mighty things that you are doing for you are so great. You are so good. And your loving kindness never ceases. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I just want to give everybody a chance to worship the Lord with their finances right now. We don't normally do that. But, you know, it's a part of worship that everybody wants to take place in. You want to take a part of. You don't want to leave that part out at any time in your worship because the Lord says, if you put my sanctuary first, you put my house first, you put my kingdom first, you put my things first, you, you watch and you see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. And you know, as we fellowship with that, with that word that God spoke out of heaven to us, and we look that we give of our temporal things, and he blesses us with heavenly things, that is so far greater than temporal things. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And every part of worship that's giving of ourselves, that's hooking up with this covenant and this relationship and this fellowship that we have with the Father, that we are saying, Father, you are my God and you have everything in me. I'm not holding anything back. Lord, you have it all. And you will supply my needs. When we get outside of our ability in our finances, you know, I was thinking the other day, you know, when David and I were young and we tried to kind of have some kind of a budget, and we tried to, you know, work at our finances and have some for saving and this and that and the other. And we tried to figure it all out. And, and we lived so tight. And, uh, you know, there was times that, you know, there just wasn't enough. And I remember as the Lord grew us up in him and we just released the finances. The Lord said, give it, we gave it, we needed to do this, we did it. And we just didn't, we didn't walk in the realm of having to be concerned about it. I used to be the best coupon clipper there was. Get more for your money in every way you could. And, and I mean, all of that is good and everything. But... Um, you know, there's a place to supply with God. You just get busy in your kingdom, in his kingdom, and you're doing what he wants you to do, and he takes care of the rest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can quit your job, and God will take care of you if you're putting him first. We tried it. David quit his job. He said, I don't like He came home one day from work, and he said, I hate this job. I don't want to work this job anymore. And he, you know, and I watched him. He'd come home. He'd, he'd sit in these boilers shooting these things at whatever. I don't even know what he did. But anyway, I know he came home and he was black. I, you know, it takes me a while to get it. But anyway, on stuff like that. But anyway, he was doing something. And he'd come home and he'd just be black with all this ash and soot and stuff. And, you know, he would cough up black stuff and stuff like that. And he just, he came home one day and he said, I hate this job. I just, I don't like it. And I'm like, okay, we'll quit. You know, I was brilliant. <laughs> quit. And then we won't have any finances coming in. And he was making really, really good money. But you know what? If he didn't love what he was doing, if, it, if he didn't feel like that that's what God wanted him to do, quit. There'll be something else. Because I did have this part. That's not our supply. Yeah. Never think your job is the supply for you. God is your supplier. And it doesn't matter 
what you're doing. God will supply all your needs as long as you're doing kingdom business. It doesn't matter your job. It matters that you're doing what God wants you to do and the supply will be there. He'll take care of you. He'll meet all your needs. And, and it's amazing. You walk in miracle. You walk in miracle provision. Because when you get wrapped up in ministry and in the kingdom, you, you know, you don't always have time to work and make finances. And people don't always give you money when you're working in the kingdom. When we, um, when we spent the time working and building for two years, getting uh, the, the Willow Creek property ready and getting everything done there, I mean, we worked six days a week, long hours, and any volunteer we could get. And very little did David take time to go get work and get finances to bring in to take care of us. But God always supplied. And the car, the tires didn't wear out. And, I mean, everything we had was just so blessed and so multiplied. And provision was so there. And I could tell a story after story after story after story. Because our focus wasn't on finances. We didn't live in fear. We lived in belief, believing that God was going to take care of us. So then you, know, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to, you know, figure out the coupons and budget everything and separate it all out. I used to have all the white envelopes. And when the money, when the food envelope ran out, then, I, you know, we couldn't go get any more food until we got another paycheck. You know, we tried all that silliness. But now we just believe God for the provision and he takes care of it. Amen. And we're going to take that faith even higher. We haven't pressed into that enough because we've pressed in to just doing the ministry that's at our hand. And I tell you, that will keep you plenty busy. We just, you know, if, if you're seeking first the kingdom of God and you just jump in, believe me, you will stay busy. There's not enough laborers. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. But if you jump in to whatever God puts in front of you and you just go for it, then you'll stay so busy you won't have time to remember about white envelopes and clipping coupons or, or whether you have the finances or not. It'll just be there. God is so faithful. He's so good. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. So anyway, I think that everybody should have had time now to get out your wallets and you know, write your checks and be ready to just jump up and joyfully come exuberantly and worship the Lord with all that he has blessed you with, with what he's blessed you with. So come, everybody's still sitting there. Let's see, I said jump up exuberantly, excited. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We can have some shouting. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. See your dear, dear, and then a baba baby today. I'm ready to go back worshiping. Just have a, uh, an offering worship song and just keep worshiping. Because I tell you, that I'm, I promise you, you will find, you will find strength in the worship. You will find your strength in his presence. See, because we enter his gates with praise and his, it enter into his courts with praise and then, I, <laughs> we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I'm all hooked up on praise, but thanksgiving is just as important because if we're not thankful, for what he's done, then how can he bless? Hallelujah. So thankful and, and praise. And then we enter in. And then he pours out his presence. And in his presence, in his presence, there is joy. In his presence, there is peace. In his presence, there's all the glory of heaven. Hallelujah. Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of... <laughs> Ooh, glory, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. We praise you. You know, <laughs> I 
We'll just go over here to uh, Romans. Verse 31 of chapter 8. I did say Romans, but chapter 8, verse 31. God, if God, what shall we say then to these things? If God, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be against you? It doesn't matter what the Philistine looks like, <laughs> it doesn't matter how big the bear is, it doesn't matter. What circumstances are coming against you? If God be for us, who can be? Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If he loved us so much that he spared not his own son, <laughs> ah, how much more will he freely give us all things? All the, the supply that we need. You know, we can envision great things in God. And we can accomplish them because all of the supply is there from heaven. The glory of heaven. You know, and I was just thinking about how, you know, people talk about, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm just thinking about some different people and I don't want to talk about it, but I was, ta I was you know, just kind of talking to the Lord about, um, people that have got their eyes set on a goal and they're like, I'm going to accomplish it. And the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and said, He will accomplish it. He will. He will accomplish it because He has set His heart on the kingdom. He set His heart on me. And He has purpose in the kingdom to accomplish it. And one day, when God prepares him and he gets him to the place that He wants him to be, the Lord will fulfill that because He puts those things in our mouth. Now, he'll take away the things that shouldn't be there, and he'll clean it all out, and he'll prepare us and make us ready to really be able to walk it out and fulfill it. He'll get all of our stuff, all the mixture out. He's working on us to make sure that we don't bring any mixture along with us. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But it will be accomplished. You talk about it. You, you talk about what God's doing. You talk faith, not doubt and unbelief. You talk about what's in your heart, the vision that's in your heart, the purpose and the plan that God's placed in your heart. And you don't let go of it. And God will fulfill it in you. Who shall lay anything against the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. And what did Jesus say? He says that neither do I condemn you to the woman that was taken in the middle of adultery. And everybody says, look, let's obey the law of Moses and let's stone her. Let's put sin out from us. And here comes this Jesus that's preaching the love, the love, the love, the love, the love of God, the goodness of God, the kindness of God. And we'll, and we'll get him on this one because, because he, will, he will have to, if he is... Who he says he is, he will have to go with the law of Moses or we'll have a place to accuse him. But Jesus, he looks at her. He, he first tells them, he goes, you that have not committed any sin, you throw the first stone. You be the one that throws the first stone. And they had to think about that one for a, a minute and they were dropping the stones. And then he grabs the woman by the hand. Oh, God's love. And he says, neither. He says, first he says, where are your accusers, Lord? Where are your accusers? She says, I have none, Lord. And he goes, neither do I condemn you. You know, Jesus doesn't condemn. He brings life. He doesn't condemn. He doesn't bring condemnation. He washes away your sins when you humble yourself and you come to him. And he says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, that's the part that people leave out, too. People get under, there's, there's a different parts. People get under a spirit of condemnation to where they can't get over what they've done. Are they're condemned because they continue on in it? 
and they can't get the part, go and sin no more. See, Jesus didn't tell her to go and do something that was impossible. He told her something to go and do that he equipped her for, that he gave her power to do. In him, in Christ, in Christ you can do all things. All things. So is he, who is he that condemneth? It's, it, it, if the enemy's condemning you, don't listen. Turn that, chan, turn that off. Just reach up and turn that switch. Turn it off. It's Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who's making intercession for you. <laughs> he's praying for you. He prayed for you in John 17, and he's, he's right there at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. He's like, come on! Father, strengthen them, Lord, empower them, Lord, equip them, Lord, keep them by my name. Hallelujah. The Lord's rooting for you. He's telling you, come on, get up, run. Go. Hallelujah. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? These things will come. Tribulation and distress will, will come. You, you will go through some stuff. Our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our pearl, our sword, as it's written, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. 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 We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more. You guys are just too quiet. Come on. He said you're more than a conqueror. He said that you're more than a conqueror. You say that. You say that. Come on. I'm more than a conqueror. I don't have to come under. I don't have to come under what the enemy's laid out for me. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Not through my own ability, but through the ability of Jesus Christ. I am more than a conqueror. Conqueror. Nothing is too hard for him. And he's in me. So let's get up and go. Hallelujah. We can. We're a can-do people. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You don't look at anything that is too hard. Nothing's too hard for God. Nothing's impossible for God. He is able. And he's on the inside of me. And it's his good pleasure. If he spared not his own son, will he not give us all things freely? Now we just hook up with believing that he will give us all things freely. We believe it. And when he says, come out, I'm going to change some things going on with you. Come out this way and follow me. Then we just by faith take a hold of him and we go out. We come out with him. And we follow him. We just be obedient. It's just simply obedience. That's walking with God, just simple obedience to who he is. Oh, I, I like that scripture again. We're going to read it one more time. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, I am persuaded. Now get this persuasion. Come on, everybody, get this persuasion. Come on now. Don't you leave here this morning and forget about what the Lord was talking to you about this morning. This morning, you allow God to change you because you take a hold of what the Holy Ghost is saying by the Spirit. You let it be imparted into you. You let that seed remain of His Word on the inside of you. And you let it begin to grow inside of you and build you up in your most holy faith. Hallelujah. Let it build you up as this word is brought into you. Let it be engrafted in you. And I am persuaded that neither, I am persuaded that neither death or life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Nothing, 
What can separate you from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. Nothing will take me outside of this glorious fellowship relationship. All I have to do if I make a mistake is come running. Come running back to him. Call upon his name and he will be there. He will be there waiting on me. Ever bending us to come. Oh, the goodness of God. Oh, that leads men to repentance. That draws us into his presence. Oh, Jesus, we praise you. Let's, uh, whew, let's um, back up. Go over to <laughs> Romans chapter 5. <laughs> Jesus. And just talk a little bit about how good God is. Is. Let's just start with the beginning. Therefore, being justifi justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith. We have access. We have all the access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Now what do we do with tribulation? Glory. <laughs> we glory in tribulation. We've got some people that are paying attention here. We glory in tribulation. Also knowing that tribulation works the patience that we need. We need that patience. So the more tribulation you've got, Going on, the more you know that God needs to work patience in you. Hallelujah. So we can count it all joy when we get in the middle of tribulation. When we get in the middle of, of those tough situations, we count it all joy. I remember going through something. You know, the enemy had come out against me with something, and it, I, I went through it, and I flunked. I don't, you know, God forgive me, and you know, I went through all that wrestling. Why in the world did I get caught up in that? How did that happen? And, you know, why? And you, and you go through all of that stuff because you want to kind of fix it for yourself. You know, you want to kind of like reason your way through the whole thing, of what, you know. And so then I'd go through that same thing again, and I'd mess up again. I'd fail. And I'm like, ugh frustrated and agonizing over it and why did I allow this again and this went on for a little bit it would be you know spread out so it would like kind of come and catch me off guard again and I remember the last time that I went through that particular situation and I failed I'm like okay I got this one down I'm aware of the enemy's devices this time that's it that's it. Now, Father, bring it on. Put me through it. Lord, I just cannot wait to go through that one again because I'm going to win. I am done with this thing. I am done with this thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am going to take this giant down. I'm going to bring this thing down. And I mean, I just went after it in the spirit. And I, it's done. It's done when you get a hold of it. And you go, no, I'm not going there. I'm not participating. I'm not yielding my members in any way. You know, we've tried continually. And we've got the choice of either we're going to count it all joy and go through it and win, or we're going to get all upset and pout <laughs> and flunk. <laughs> flunk the whole thing because we got upset about the situation because we didn't like how it was going. Oh, God will work you over, believe me. He's going to change you. He's going to form you and fashion you into what he wants, not what you want. And it's so lovely. It's so good. Because really, you don't have a whole lot to offer. You don't. I know because I don't. We don't have a whole lot to offer. God has a lot to offer. Let him be in you and let him do his perfect work and show forth his glory through you. Much, much better than what you could ever do. Much, much better. 
being totally and completely reliant upon Him to do it. And patience brings experience, and experience hope. And hope makes not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, <laughs> in due time, Christ died for us. When we were yet without strength, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Scarcely for a righteous man would anyone die. But yet, preventure, for a good man some would even dare die. But God showed, he commended his love toward us. He showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. While we were his enemy. We were his enemy. And he died for us. That's the love of God. And only the love of God. How many would die for their enemy? Scarcely for a righteous man would anyone die. And yet, while we were the enemies of God, he died for us. This love, this love has God put in our hearts. This love is what God has called us to live and walk in. But first, accept for us that he loves us. When we accept his love completely and fully for ourselves, when we so get captivated by this love, then we can be the examples of loving one another as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, died for us when we were yet sinners. When we have a friend that does something wrong with us, we think vengeance is mine, not vengeance is the Lord's. We, we take it upon ourselves. I'm going to fix this thing. They're never going to do this to me again. I'm going to have to straighten them out. That ain't what God said. He said, while we were yet sinners, while we got it wrong, we had it all wrong. We were on the side of Satan. We were on Satan's side. And Jesus died for us. Now we're to love like he loves. We're to accept that love, walk in that love, be full of that love. And you know why, why we're talking about this, why I'm ministering about this this morning, why the Lord has us on this, is because we need that love in us and showing through us. This is the more than conquer living. When it's us, first us, then others. But first, us receiving that, that love of God, knowing that confidence. I'm persuaded. Paul was persuaded. Be persuaded this morning. The love that God has for you. Be persuaded of his goodness for you. Be persuaded that if he would not withhold his only son, but he would send his only son to save you and bring you back into relationship and fellowship with you, will he not give you all things? Will he not take care of every situation that you have? Will he not pour out his spirit upon you? Will he withhold anything from you? Then believe. Let's believe that. Let's receive that. Let's walk in it. Let's take a hold of it for whatever thing is going on for our loved one, for somebody that is in need. Let's not get discouraged, but let's say, Lion, Bear, you're getting out of my way because the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost has moved in on the inside of me, and God will not withhold anything with, from me. I said this week in a, a situation I was going through, I said, Father, I thank you that you're going to take care of it because I'm your favorite child. I'm your favorite. You love me so much. <laughs> oh, that while I was yet your enemy, you died for me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Taking a hold of God in that way. To where there is nothing that will, you will allow in your mind. See, in our minds we were enemies of God. 
But now our minds are renewed day by day. Now those minds are cleaned up through the water of the word. They're washed, taking a hold. And it is, it is so living. It is life. It is glorious. It's, no wonder David was such a worshiper because when you get caught up in that realm, come on, people, you know that glory that fills your soul. It's not, it's not just a on paper that I have to live out and I've got to do, but it's the glory of heaven as you take a hold of it by the Holy Spirit and it becomes living to you and you go rejoicing in that glory that he puts on side of you that makes you feel like you're bigger than Goliath because you feel that exploding power of the living God we want to live in this glory we want to walk in this place with him we want his glory to fill us every moment thank you Lord Jesus we praise you father we thank you, Father, that you draw every person in this place with your loving kindness and your tender mercy. That not one person in this place ever come again to that road of going around and around of disappointment and discouragement and condemnation and feeling like they're not good enough and that they have to obtain somehow. But, Father, that they will just receive what you have done through your Son, Jesus Christ that they will receive it by your spirit and they will not let go. They will not let circumstances and what other people do affect them. You know, people get all in a, in, in a quandary because somebody said something and did something. Somebody in the church hurt their feelings. And there's, you know, there's hypocrites in that church. They go over there and they don't do what they're supposed to be doing and, and so I don't want to go to that church. I'd rather go to church with a bunch of hypocrites and go to hell with them. It's not about whether other people are hypocrites or not. It's, is, is it, are you a hypocrite? Are you in it to serve Jesus? Is Jesus your all in all? Have you fell in love? Have you fell in love with the one that came and washed you and cleansed you and bought you with the price of his life? Have you fell in love with God Almighty that created you and then died for you? Are you in love with him? Are you looking about what other people are doing? I don't know where he said, anywhere, that he said, put your eyes on people. It says, turn your eyes on Jesus. Look, look at Jesus. Look at his glory. It's about our relationship with God, not our relationship with people. So one person hurts your feelings, you love them, you bless them, bake them a cake, <laughs> do something good for them. And you just focus on serving Jesus. You show them, you show the hypocrites the love of God. Think about your, you know about your hypocrites? Show them the love of God. You be the example. You be the one that's in love with Jesus. You're the head, not the tail. You need to go and read the Bible if you're sitting in the corner whining. About how you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. He has set you on high. He set you in heavenly places. Good gracious sakes, if, you, if you're the best friend to Jesus, if you're his favorite child, what do you care what other people think or what they do? It's about you and Jesus. And it's about you bringing people with you. With you. Not always looking intimidated over in the corner. You would never make a, a David, a little shepherd boy David worshiping like that. But I'll tell you what, right there's the key. We started with it, and there's the key. When circumstances come your way, you know it's easy for David and other people that are worshipers to just worship. They, they've, they've been anointed with that gift. They've got that call and that anointing upon their life, and they're anointed with that gift to worship. But for people that can't sing or play an instrument like me, you know, I sing in the shower when nobody can hear me, and then my husband can go outside. Because I, I let it rip when nobody's around. Because I'm going to worship. And I'll, I'll get carried up over here and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let it go too. And I'm like, I, I'll, come, I'll come back to myself in a little bit. And I'm like, oh Lord, I hope I didn't throw the whole thing off. But anyway, <laughs> it, anyway, it's easier for them. But you know what? You can just jump into that place of worship. 
It doesn't matter. Just worship him. Just get caught up in the realms of his glory. And you can overcome any obstacle in any situation. You don't have to be underneath anything. You're God's favorite child. You don't have to feel insecure, left out, hurt, beat up, or disliking all the hypocrites that go to church. (laughs) Hey, they're in church. So if you have to go to church with a bunch of hypocrites, you better be in church. And then that way, you can show them the love of God. Hallelujah. You can be the light in the middle of the church. It's sad that we might have to be light in the middle of the church, but that's okay. It's about your relationship with Jesus. It's about you doing it right. It's about you living for him. It's about you shining bright with the glory because he's done it all. He's he's done everything for you. And all you have to do is receive. And when you receive, when you fully receive, you can't help yourself but to obey because you're raptured over in that glory and you find yourself valiant when the bear comes and the lion comes and Goliath rears his ugly head. You find yourself valiant because you're in him and he's in you. Oh, praise you, Jesus for your great love that you have for every person in this place. There's not one person that should leave this place that you don't feel like you've got everything right with God, that you don't feel like everything in your life is straightened out with God because it only takes one moment of you saying, Father, here I am. I'm yours. Forgive me. Lord Jesus, you wash me and you cleanse me from my sins. And you set me up on high. And I, even though I've made a mess of things, I've made a mess of things. Father, here I am. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to live it out. I'm going to walk it out like your word says. I'm going to be obedient to you. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for the glory of your presence in this place. We thank you, Father, for the glory of your presence in this place. And Father, I just thank you for people that may not even come forward today to be prayed for, but people in this place, Father, that you are dealing with their hearts, and, Father, they're going to make the change in their life today. They're going to say, okay, that's it, God. Let me go through it again because I am not going to allow the enemy to, to, to blindside me anymore in this area. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to live for you. Here I am, Jesus. I am yours. Here I am. You can have all of me. Take all of me, Lord. I... Truly today, I truly today give you all of my life. I hold nothing back any longer. And see, that's the problem. So many people want to give Jesus just enough of their life. They think that they can make it to heaven with just so much. But Jesus says he wants it all. He doesn't want you to hold anything back. There's not one thing God wants you to hold back. He wants you to surrender it all and and, and say, though none go with me. If nobody goes with me, if I have to let go of of this and that and I just have to let the weights go off of me, those things that I'm holding on to so tightly that uh, surely it's got to be God that gave me this. It's got to be God that's telling me to do this. And yet God's dealing with you to let go of it. But you're holding on to it because you're not really giving all. You're not really giving all. You say it with your mouth. But your heart is far from it. God is calling you today to let go of your life. To really, really mean what you say when you say, Father, here's my life. Take it. Have it all. I'm not holding on anymore. I'm not holding on to my life. It doesn't matter what comes or what goes. Father, I truly, this morning, surrender myself to you. No longer to live my own life, but to live your life in me and let your glory be revealed in me by your precious Holy Spirit. Everybody stand with me. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your glorious, wonderful presence that is in this place that would deal with the hearts of men. Oh, Father God, your loving kindness and your tender mercies that will never, will never let go. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. If Father has touched you and if you felt the touch of the Holy Spirit and God dealing with you and you don't even know why, but you know God touched you and he began to deal with you 
as he was ministering here this morning. I want you to come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Don't, don't sit back and wait for another time. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Move out, move out, come quickly, come quickly. If you haven't given your life completely to Jesus, come now. Come now. If Jesus is telling you, give your whole life, you're holding on to that. You're holding on to your own life. You've allowed things in your life that are not pleasing to me. I want you to separate yourself from them. If he's just touched you, if he's just touched you by the power of his Holy Spirit, and you want to say, Father, I want to go deeper. I want to go deeper. Lord, I need more. 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 Jesus, I need more. Oh, hallelujah. Step out. Don't allow pride, humility. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Take my life, oh God. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Jesus.